Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. A beautiful quote by Mola Ali alayhi salam. No mirror can reflect a picture of a humor better than his attitude and the way he speaks. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My Hi. name is Faiza Rizvi and I will be your host. I give a warm welcome to Dr. Talib Uncle, who is a well-known scholar. Our topic for today is humanity in Islam. We will start off with our dua. Brother Misam, please start reciting. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman. Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki al-Madin. Aetina sirat al Uh, Brother Misam, I can't hear you. Are you still doing the dua? Hey, sorry, I took my mic off. Uh, what if I would be Rahman Rahim? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim, Malik Yom Adin, Yakin Abdu, Yakin Asain, Etan Asirat and Mustahin, Sirat Lazin Alam Talim, Ayyam. Thank you very much. Uh, that was very good recitation. Um, anyone who wants to recite a small mankabat, uh, they can. If anyone would like to recite. No? Okay. Um, so no one wants to recite. Yeah, that's fine. I understand it's it's the first it's the first session. So I I will do one I'll do one verse. Okay. Mashallah. Go ahead. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Al mudad mushkil kusham ala raza. 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 Jis ne poocha kaun hai zamin tera. Jis ne poocha kaun hai zamin tera. Maine foran kadiya ala raza. Ah, oh, Thank you. Uh, Talib Uncle, would you like to start off with your lecture, please? Alhamdulillah. With your permission, why not? In Mashallah. Auzu billahi min al-shaytani al-rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal-mursaleen. Wa khatib al-nabiyin. Sayyidina wa nabiyina. Wa shafiyyana bil qasim Muhammad 
تبارک في كتاب المبين وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كنتم خير أمة أو خيرست للناس عمارون بالمعروف تعنون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله My children, recite a salvat as loud as you can اللهم Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I request all the children to have your mics on, on. Don't put it on mute so that I can have the honor and pleasure of listening to your salawat. Eh? Right? Now, first and foremost thing, it is my life's great honor and pleasure to be amongst our young folks, our young brothers and sisters, our lovely children, our beautiful petals, and it is a great honor to be amongst you on this, on, on this program. And I want to say that you are the, the blooming flowers of our community that we take pride on. I will see if I can take children of all ages from 8 to 16 together so that I make my talk as light as I can, right? As simple as I can. So if it is too simple, just bear with it. If, it, if I go too hard, just start writing salawat three, four times a day, I will get the meaning and uh, message that I should go slow and steady. Now, children, the topic, my young Mary uh, 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 Bachir, the topic today is Islam and the, the, the obligation that Islam had, right, in the community, right? And to understand that, we have to understand what we are, why we are here, who sent us here to this world, right? And what does humanity mean? What does Islam mean? And what does humanity mean? My young, my Mary Bacho, Mary Bacho, the Islam is a religion. It is a faith, right? And a Islam is a, 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 a method, a, a anthology, a book, a formula for us to live our whole life from the moment we enter this world to the moment we depart from this world, the whole way of life as we live in this world is called Islam. Uh, in many you say, Islam is not a religion, but actually it is a method of total life rules and regulations, right? Now, in Islam, the, the, perp, the place of humanity, right? The place of humanity is extremely important. Islam welcomes those people who live in communities, right, and take play, play their role in the whole of humanity. Islam does not have any difference between little children, adults, old age people. There is no difference. Islam has got duties assigned to all of them. All people, all of walks of life have 
God some duties assigned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By God, our creator, who created this beautiful earth, this beautiful surrounding, this beautiful universe created by Allah. And we in the, we have come to this domain of Allah, this, this paradise called earth. It, earth is a beautiful place. Allah takes pride and says, what a beautiful thing I have created called earth. And this special place called earth, he chose special people like you and I. We are called insan, human beings. We have been sent to this special place, a special creation of Allah in the whole universe. In the whole of universe, apart from Jannah, the paradise, there is nothing more beautiful than this earth in the creation of Allah. And in the whole creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we as human beings are his best of creation. Allah says, I, this is the best of creation and I take pride in my creation. The pride in human being. Allah says, I'm a musavvir. Right? In, ayat, in Surah Hashan, Allah says, I'm a musavvir. I'm a painter. I'm a musavvir and I'm a painter. And I've painted this be beautiful panorama, this beautiful view of this, uh, of this planet Earth. Of this, uh, of this earth itself. And when he created this, he says, I want it to be inhabited. I want it to be, uh, to go to the people who are the most beautiful of my creation, the human being. And you know what he called these human beings? He called them Ashraful Makhluqat. Means the great makhluk means Allah's creation, right? Uh, uh, Allah's greatest of creation, Ashraf means the highest. And he says, insan, human being, you are the greatest of my creation. So, but if he has made you the greatest, he has given you the great, very important uh, role to play in your life when you come to the earth. And therefore, if we understand, who oh, am I that important? Are we all that important? Yes. Even as children? Oh, yes. Even as young men? Yes. And boys and girls? Yes. Even at the old, old age like me, person like me, do we have a role? Yes. Everyone Allah has created, He has assigned them roles. Now, in, to care for the humanity, Allah hasn't sent an angels to rule the earth. Allah has given the destiny in our hands. How are we going to look about the human beings on, that inhabit this earth? How, what am I going to do? What is my role? How, um, what am I going to play my role in this world which is called humanity in the, among the human beings? Allah says, yes, everyone has a role. Children have a role. Adults have a role, old folks have a role. But what do children have a role? Young boys and girls who have just, just some about to go to school, who have just entered the school, who are, who are in the junior school, primary school, even senior school. Those who are un, at, at doing their own A-level, soon they will be going off to colleges. Do they have a role? Oh, yes. Is their role less important than the adults, like our, our parents, our grandparents, or our role is a little minimal? No. The role of everyone is equal. And as we portray our role, as we play out our role, we will be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, my children, but you are my uh, little petals. The life on this earth we have, some have got short life, some have a long life. Some people, are, Allah grant them 100 years life. In old, old books in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Quran, he writes, he gave certain prophets life of, like Hazrat Anu, more than 900 years. Some die 
when they are young, and some leave this world even they are even very young. So whatever role we play in that portion of time we are assigned to us on this earth, we will be judged by Allah Ta'ala and awarded accordingly. What, what do boys and girls, young children have a role? They have a very important role. Is their role important? Oh, yes. Can you, can we show some important roles in, in Islam, in our book called Quran, our holy uh, gospel, our holy, holy book, right? Yes. If we write even from the time of birth, and you must have heard many, many times by um, mullahs and maulanas and ayatullahs, right? And those who are with people with great knowledge who speak, they will tell you that when Maryam, that is in, in Christians called Mary, right? When she gave birth to uh, Jesus, whom we call Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, right? And Maryam, mother of Jesus, was, wasn't married, but she gave birth to a beautiful child. And people in the community, right, began to make noises about it. Maryam, how can you have a child without getting married, right? Now, Allah couldn't come down and vouch for Maryam, Bibi Maryam, or Mary, as the English uh, Christian people call her. Allah asked the little baby in the cradle, Jesus, who was just a few days old in age, he says, ask, when then the question Mary, Mariam, she says, ask this child. They say, Mariam, why are you making fun of us? Why are you making a joke out of it? How can a little child vouch on your behalf and say who you are? He says, you are. Mariam says again, ask this child and the little Jesus, the little Hazrat Isa as a child, he speaks out. He says, Hala imni Abdullah, Tani Kitaba, Wajalni Nabiya, Wajalni Mubaraka. I am uh, inni Abdullah, I am uh, the sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm his son, and I am Pahambar, I am a prophet and Allah has granted me a holy book. Right? And the whole people were amazed. Allah wanted to show when I want, I give equal importance and role to play in children and childhood and, and adulthood. No, it has nothing to do in Islam. All Islam is looking from us is how we worship Allah. Because Allah says, right, in the deen and Islam, as I say, Islam and humanity, Allah says about Islam, this is the religion of my choice. This is the religion of my side. And Allah says, I sent you on this earth for one purpose. Allah says, I sent you to this earth Oh, my people, to worship me. Now, uh, uh, worship me. Okay? Where does Allah say? Where he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتَ جِنَّ وَإِنسَ إِلَّا لِعَبَدُونَ In Quran, Allah says, I created everything. Everything, including you. And all of us. For one purpose. And the purpose is to worship me. And that is why, whatever we do, our act, if it is for the worship of Allah, it is if it is our worship, it is our prayer, right? Anything you do, even a sip of water you drink and say, shukran Allah, thank you Allah for granting me this sip of water, that is prayer, that is abada, right? That is your worship. So for abada, we have been born. And therefore, we have to understand, yes, but what can a child do? 
We haven't got the knowledge of the Quran on a great hadith, and we haven't been to a Hoza or a religious school. Nobody has taught us it. How? No, not at all. My children, every day of your life, from morning to bedtime, everything you do good to please Allah is ibadah, is worship. And it is as valuable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the prayers five times of uh, an old man, sage like me, right? Look, I look 99, but I'm not 99 years, okay? I'm still young, right? So an old man like me reciting five times prayers, reciting the Quran, is it more valuable than a child's little act of penance, little act of kindness, little act of obedience, little act of charity of a child? Is it less important? No, it is as important as important as anything. Now, I have been assigned just half an hour to speak on something, and then we can catch up later on. I will tell you uh, an incident, a true incident. I told you of a child like uh, Jesus, right? Son of Mary, Hazrat Maria al Islam, his son, Hazrat Isa al Islam, how a child spoke out on behalf of his mother for, G, for Jesus, Hazrat Isa Islam, was dignity of her mother, honor of her mother, was very important. And Allah gave the strength for him to speak. And those who do good in life, Allah protects them. And those who do good in life towards others, and those who good towards the protection of Islam and Allah's religion, Allah's deen, Allah rewards them as well. I will give you a true story. It is not a thousand year old story from the time of Adam or Nu or Moses. No, it is a modern day. Now, this present time story and a true one, right? And I was reading just like you when I'm sitting down, you know, having my sip of coffee, I look at the internet and something comes up on YouTube or WhatsApp and some people, and sometimes there are very interesting things. And I was looking at it and I, I, I said, was reading it, then I came across a very interesting story. And I will share that with you in a few minutes, for a few minutes, and then we will uh, take a break. And the story begins of a young family in Syria, in Sham. You know, Sham is a very important place for us because in Sham is the place our Shahzadi, Jinnab Zainab, is his, 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 his the Raza is there. We go for Zarat over there. So Sham is very important. Plus, there are other uh, places of Zarat in Sham as well, just like in Karbala. Right, we have got Najaf, Karbala, Samara, Kazman in Sham. We have got the Rosa of Janabe Zainas Ramla. In that Sham, in that country called Syria, during the regime of Hafiz of the Sadas, Hafiz al Assad, who was the president then, a very brutal man, a dictator. So one, one young family, one man escaped from Syria and he flew to United States of America and he took asylum there. And he went and settled down in a place called Los Angeles. You must have heard of the Los Angeles, you know, where Hollywood and all those things are, right? So he went there and he settled down there. Then once he had got his, with Americans called green card, the in, what you call permission to stay there indefinitely and to have his family together. Then he wrote to his wife message that sell everything you have, right? Buy a ticket for yourself and your three daughters and fly to Los Angeles. So the wife, wife uh, 
sold everything she had. She gathered a little bit of money, whatever she could, bought the ticket and flew off to America. So in America, once she lands at the airport, she, they have to go to immigration. Like we all have to go through immigration, you know, at the airport. So they went to the immigration. The immigration paper, they showed the papers. Look, my husband has taken asylum here. He has got his green card. Now he has got the, his permission from the authority to bring his family here. We have flown from Syria to join our husband, and our father in Los Angeles. They said, no problem. Your documents are correct. What we will do is we have to make a green card for you. So we need uh, whatever documentation so that you can fly and join your husband or and your parent, father in Los Angeles. So, but for that formalities, we need to take some photograph, you know, passport side photograph to stick on the document to show who you are. And so the, the custom guys, immigration officer said to the mother, uh, if you take your hijab off, you know, she was wearing a Syrian Arab dress, right? The women do, and she had her hijab on. He said, lady, please take it out for one minute. We will photograph you, paste it on the paper. You can put your hijab back in one minute and it's done. So the mother took her hijab off. She had her photograph taken, you know, the passport type photograph people take. And she had it stuck, didn't write. Then the custom officer, immigration officer, who is next? Then the elder daughter came. He said, take your hijab off. She took the hijab off and she had a paper stuck, the photos of, and she was there. And the last one was a little girl of how many? 13 years of age. So it's her turn. And the officer, immigration officer, said, uh, young girl, if you take your hijab off, uh, only, it'll only take me one minute, take your photograph off, you put your hijab, we will do the paperwork, all the paper will be done, you hooray, you can go off and fly off to meet your dad. Now look what the problem happens. The little young girl says, mm -hmm. I'm not taking my hijab off. He said, but girl, only for one minute. It has to be without, it has to be a profile without any head cover. That's the law, right? He said, no, but why don't you want to take it off? He says, no, my religion, Islam says that I have the right to have my protection of my hijab is compulsory in my, in my religion, Islam, and my duty is to obey and protect my religion and Islam. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm not taking off my headgear. They said, mother, please explain to your child. You took it off for one minute. Your elder daughter took it for, it didn't take long, did it? Can you please explain? We are wasting time. Mother says to the little child, take your hijab off. If we don't, it will be difficult. We are getting late. We are going to lose the connecting flight to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Mommy, I'm not taking it off. Officer said, if you don't take off your hijab, we will let your mother fly to Los Angeles. We will let your sisters fly off to Los Angeles and you will be sent back to Damascus in Syria. Would you like to go back? He says, yes, I don't mind. And mother says, Betty, what are you doing? You're wasting time. What will you do in Syria alone? Mommy and daddy, everybody will be in Los Angeles. <laughs> no. She's a very stubborn girl. Why don't you want to take out? She says, it is my right, given my Allah. Right? Humanity, in humanity, everybody has a right. Allah has given every human being their right. My right is to protect my religious uh, belief. And I'm not going... But what will you do in Syria? He says, mommy, if I go back to Syria, and she's only 13, she says, Allah will look after me. Mother says, good Lord, what am I doing? Anyway, they called all the senior officers at the airport. They came, they tried, she wouldn't listen. I'm running out of time, so I'll make it as quick as I can. And the officer said, girl, one minute only. My 
मेरे बच्चों मेरे बच्चों the officers my children had to give up the senior most officer at the airport said i give up and said to his junior officers make it an exception she is the first person who will have a passport or whatever green card whatever uh, documentation photo taken with the hijab on we will break this rule for her and at last they had the picture taken first and foremost with uh, her hijab on got the picture got the document run catch the collecting connecting flight to los angeles where are they at ohara international airport in chicago they come to american airlines desk right they say sorry you have missed your flight your plane has taken off mother said what do i do he says no you have to buy another ticket but i haven't got the money now another couple of hours went by they said we haven't got money believe us you can check our luggage everything the officers got tired they said okay we'll give you a free flight next flight to los angeles when they got in the flight they landed at los angeles international airport daddy father husband was waiting there for the family to go and when he saw his wife and daughters he burst out crying he was crying as loud as he could the whole airport was didn't know what he says why are you crying daddy uh, why we are here now you should be happy he says no i'm crying because the flight you missed because of all the commotion that was going on the flight you missed was was flight uh, number flight number a american airlines flight number 199 mcdonald douglas dc 10 Air, airline right on may the 25th 1979 may the 25th 1979 because of all the commotion that girl created she missed the flight had to catch the next flight had they been on that flight the proper flight they missed right that was a uh, flight 191 that flight was the one flight that when it took off from ohara international airport the plane burst into flame and in american aviation history it is recorded the 258 passengers plus extra crews all they all died uh, in that Uh, air accident and that was the one of the great biggest disaster in american history had that girl taken her hijab off not fought her for a right they would have been on that plane and they too would have been gone dead right allah has his mysterious ways of protecting those who protect islam allah has his mysterious ways those who protect others around them surrounding them in their family in their community in their classroom in their towns in their villages in their neighborhood allah protects them and saves them in mysterious ways that was the role of a 13 year child who i know you will say disobeyed her mother politely but stood to her gun and said what islam has bestowed upon me what islam has given me i am going to cherish it and i am going to protect it and i am going to fight for it come what may and the role of islam is in the community i am going to do the best for the community i am going to the no matter what religion may be may be christians hindus sikh jew whoever as long as they are allah's cre- creation allah's um, peep k- 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 human beings i am going to protect them because it will please allah anything that pleases allah anything we do to please allah is worship is our is our 
اعوا ابعدا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد تو اي هاف ٹیکن 2 3 منٹس لٹل ایکسٹرا بٹ ڈونٹ ٹیل اینی ون کیپ اٹ اے سیکرٹ थैंक यू सो मच ताले बंगो फॉर योर इंफॉर्मेटिव लेक्चर नाउ वी विल गो टुवर्ड्स आवर क्वेश्चंस एंड आंसर सेशन सो um i have two questions i would like to ask so uh, the first one is since hazrat adam alay salam was the first person on earth did allah make the angels tell him to behave like a good human or did allah tell him to behave well before he was sent down to us auzu billahi minash shaitani rajeem what a beautiful question from a very pretty beautiful faiza right thank you listen what we believe is number 1 that uh, that all those our prophets all those our aima right rasulullah and his progeny they are they are masumin when when they are masumin means that they do no khata they do no wrong they are sublime in nature right so when hazrat adam was in uh, in, in 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 paradise when allah Uh, said to the farishte that i am going to send my khalifa my khalifa means my representative who will represent allah now remember in this country also from pakistan from india there are ambassadors who have been flown all the way from karachi or delhi or wherever to represent their highest authority so allah said i am sending my highest authority highest in my creation my authority to represent me on the earth so if anybody is going to represent uh, allah subhanahu wa taala must have the great qualities and manifestation which allah possesses himself so allah there is no one more honorable more sublime more kind in every every aspect allah is, is is allah himself and so he bestowed he gave to adam in his nature in his thought thinking in his in his talks in his words in his in his heart everything which is the best of allah's creation allah gave adam his own image that adam when he goes to the earth he behaves in the manifestations of allah the qualities of allah right that and so that the people can say yes right he is the true representative of allah when when allah wants to say his representative he makes a make sure his representative is such that nobody can compare with him he is true he is so good he is so nice he is so kind he is so wonderful in every aspect and that is that is why they make no mistake right in some religion in they are uh, in jewish religion and uh, and christianity it is said that allah adam sinned right allah, uh, adam did a sin right right so adam did sin all right that's it Nice. Thank you, Talib Uncle. And my second question is: uh, Is Imam Ali alayhi salam superior or equal to the rest of the prophets, other than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? You ask such beautiful questions that you see, Talib Uncle is getting nervous now. But what will the third question be like? Eh? <laughs> that's what. Yes, that's a very important question. because that question that you have asked right is a question that has split the followers of islam into different camps into different thinking spheres right right what your question has is so important so very important that has 
it has split into Islam into 73 different sects, say different sections of thoughts, right? It is that important a question. You see, but all believe, all uh, Muslims agree when and when they read the Holy Quran, uh, Allah says, when I wanted to be recognized for my pleasure, right? Allah, you see, says, kun for you kun. When Allah, if we say kun for you kun, it takes time, right? But in real meaning of kun for to man, meaning is Allah just thinks about it and it happens. Allah for his own creation wanted to create and he created the noor. Noor is difficult to say. We say noor means light, right? Roshni, right? It is much more than that. But anyway, Allah created a noor, a noor in his own image, a creation in his own image. And when he created That noor into two halves, right? Into two halves, uh, right? The, fir the first, uh, so from one noor is split into two. One half is Muhammad and the other half is Ali, right? So they are part of one noor. And in Hadith, when you will, those who are Older children will re, 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 will understand recitation in Imam Barga during Majlis that from Wahid from one Nur then came two and they are the two image of one another. They are just one, but they have been assigned by Allah two different roles: the role of Prophet who went to Hazrat Rasulullah, right, and the role of the other half of that noor went to Maulai Kanad, Ali ibn Abi Talib Islam, who was to succeed him and to propagate and take Islam further, right? The rule, rule of Velayat, the noor of Imamat. But, and from these two noor, there was nothing else. And after many, many I don't know what time is spare is, then, then other sub beings were created, right? Like the Farishte and, and thereafter the various prophets. Now they too have to be given knowledge, right? So from the time of the angels, the Farishte to everyone, they were all Shagird, means they all learned they got their knowledge right right through whom through Mawlai Kanat Ali ibn Abi Talib so we hear of Gabriel angel Hazrat Jibreel and you will read in books as you grow older and you will hear in Imam Barga who was the Ustad the teacher of, of the angels angels of all the is Hazrat Ali 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 Islam. And, and of how all the Nabi, the Prophet, Hazrat Ali Ali Islam. Right? When all the all these prophets, Adam, Nu, Musa, Isa, Dawood, all the prophets, when they were in difficulties, right? When we, when you children are difficulty doing your homework. Right? You go and ask your star, your teacher, please teacher, can you help me with this knowledge or with this task? This task duty is very heavy and he, he or she or teacher assists you. So whenever any of the prophets from Adam to Isa, Islam, any of them had any difficulty, they asked, asked Hazrat Ali Islam help. Not only them, even the prophet himself when he is in the great danger of, of help, Allah says, ask help. Ask Ali. He is there to help you. He is your successor. Right? So that, that's a very beautiful question. 
I hope I have been able to explain to you, but it's a very vital question. Thank you. Um, now, if anybody would like to ask any questions, please unmute yourself or you can type your uh, questions in the chat, please. Uh, ji, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Ji, I wanted to ask, what is so special about the, uh, uh, the Akhik stone, the red stone in the ring? Akhik. Ji. Now, you know, everything is Allah's creation, right? And Allah is pleased when they acknowledge Allah's greatness, right? And when he created the mountains, the earth, the rivers, the channels and trees, right? He, each of them asked them, right? Uh, to acknowledge Allah's greatness, right? And to submit to his obedience. And it is written that of all the rocks and the mountains and the minerals and the stones and everything, Aqiq was the first stone to acknowledge Allah's greatness, right? right? And Allah's great position as a creator, right? And therefore, since they were the, the Aqiq is the first of a stone, there are mother, mother stores, they, they, we wear it, right? Especially we followers of Shiyani Alibad, because we, we put this in our hand. Why? Because this is the first stone to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledge his greatness, acknowledge his position, and submit to his will. And anybody, who submits to Allah's will, anybody who is obedient to Allah in Shia Islam, we acknowledge them. We don't acknowledge people, they may be from big family, rich family, important family, no. We acknowledge anything in Allah's creation by the, their nature, what their quality in the worship of Allah. Gee, thank you, Jazakallah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Oh, yes, there is one here. Uh, someone said, when do when do we have to do niyat during wudu? Ah, yes. Now, listen, my my bacho, wazu Wazu is very important. It is a ritual before you come and stand before. God before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before you do that, you have to have followed the etiquette. Like if you go to uh, Belmoral Castle or in London, the Queen's system, you have to have etiquette. Or here the etiquette Allah says, before you come, follow the ritual to cleanse yourself. Right? Now, in Islam and in our Islam, niyat Intention is most important. Amal, action comes next. First thing is niyat. If the niyat is right, then Allah will accept the amal or the, uh, the practice afterwards. But niyat. So when we, when we do wazu, we take the water in one hand to the other and we wash our hand, right? Then we rinse our mouth three times. We put water through the nose three times and wash it. Then we take in our hand, uh, in our palm, closed hand, water, right? And then, then with that, we say, Vazu karta humay, or do vazu, vajib kurbatan illa for the sake of the mouth. When we have done that, so we make that intention. And then what we do is we, from up, coming down, we wash, wash, wash our face, right? And so that it cover the area, right? And so that is important. Once wazu is the most important part. Without wazu, without the niyat of the wazu, you cannot come to the site namaz, right? Because you have broken the chain of command. So what is important? And the niyat is important. And the niyat is only not when we are doing washing our hand, but when we are washing the fan, that is the time to make your niyat. 
Okay, thank you. There is another one, and it is Salam. How do we protect ourselves from the shower of Shaitan? How do we protect ourselves from? So, how do we protect ourselves from the shower of Shaitan? Oh, ah, uh, that's a that is a million million dollar question, right? Very important question. Uh, that I'm getting nervous now. Faisal, uh, such 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 clever questions coming my way. Isn't it? A very clever question and very important question. Allah, you know, when He sent us to this earth, right? Earth is beautiful. Is beautiful. It's love. look at the garden when you go to the garden in summer time. It's flower blooming, and you go to the riverside and the seas. How beautiful it is, right? So Allah sent us to this beautiful place called world, the earth. For for us to go through our trial, if we pass our trial time in, in on this earth, then we can go to heaven, right? But there's a catch. Allah, you know, we were talking about Adam alayhi salam in the beginning, right? When He created Adam alayhi salam, He asked all the fresh, all the angels, to do sajda, to Pay a respected sajda, sajda out of respect to Adam in the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He refused. He said, "I am gone. I am made of fire. Adam is made of earth, and earth is dirty, so I am superior." He didn't obey. So Allah said, "Get out of here." He says, "Oh Allah, grant me one permission. Can I go to the earth, and I have a right to to make your." Creation, your human beings, right, right, make them disobey you, make them do all the wrong things, make them take them off the wrong path completely from inside, right. And now that that is called shaitan, right, Satan. To protect yourself from Satan, it is important number one to take the help of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the to hold the grasp, the name and hand of Muhammad Ali Muhammad Ali Salam will take protect you from the evil of Shaitan. Now, Faiza, even when you are still young, small, your mother used to take you by hand to cross the street. She wouldn't let you cross the street by yourself, right? Am I right? Right. In the same way, we human beings, right? Shaitan is very, very clear. We human beings need somebody's helping hand to let us cross our cross the street. How do we cross the street? Uh, the street of which is full of evil things, bad things, right? Shaitan says, "Come this way." Right, and he wants to take us to the wrong place, wrong ideas, evil thoughts, evil mind. How do we do that? There are a few things. Number one is if you are the age to say recite prayers, then namaz or salat. We do all the all the obligatory things of Allah Metkuma, like those who are girls who are nine years of age, boys who are fifteen years of age. We have to do our salat. Fasting, etc. That prevents us from doing wrong and getting into the clasp uh, clutches of shaitan. The most important thing for the children is to listen to their parents. Right? Allah has given parents, your mom and dad, a very important duty. Not only just to send you to best school to give you lovely education, buy you lo lots of good things, and you know, lovely birthday present. No, the most important thing Allah has made your parents is to educate you, to protect how and help you to protect yourself from shaitan, to guide you, and obedience to mom and dad, following the good teachings of mom and dad, because your first university, first school, first thing is not uh, not uh, what you call. A school down the road? No, it is mother's lap. It is your home. So you have to 
the, oh, if you obey the, your mom and dad, tell you the right thing to do, the right path will protect you from evil. And the best thing is, the easiest thing for little children like you is to, if you have any doubt that is shaitan trying to mislead me, start reciting salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You know children, salawat is very, very important. Not only important, it is very, very powerful. It is more powerful than all weapons. Shaitan doesn't fear machine guns. Shaitan doesn't fear uh, cannons and, and, and hand grenades. Shaitan fears the moment you start to recite salawat, Shaitan disappears, making angry mouth and say he disappears. Shaitan Salawat is the greatest protection. Like in olden days, people used to wear a shield to protect themselves from the swords and weapons of other people. Salawat is the best weapon to fight against the evil of shaitan. Uh, thank you, Dari. I'm taking the last question now. So it is, when Allah created Hazrat Adam, what did he do on the earth? Allah, when he created Adam, he sent him for a time being, Pfizer, in a nice, comfortable, you know, five star. He went to, uh, uh, what do you call, heaven, Jannah. Who, who was with him? His wife, Hawa, Hawa, right? Adam and Hawa. So after some time, to cut it short, time came for them to come to earth. Allah said, now I have actually created you to one purpose, purpose, is to be my Khalifa on earth, right? So when Adam came to this earth, right? Adam said, met the different, that was, there was no other human being, only Adam and his wife, nobody else. Just imagine how lonely he must have been. But there were other makhluk, there were other create, uh, creators, uh, creatures that Allah has put on this earth. The, all the creatures came first to pay their respect to Adam al Islam. Now, uh, ask you, uncle, have I got five minutes uh, left? I can uh, tell you a nice thing when, when what Adam did when he came to this earth. Faiza? Are you yeah. gonna find uh, if you can do it quickly, because uh, Hashim Fiza would like to ask a question and you tell okay. yourself. No, this is very interesting, Faiza. Let me tell you to all and other children as well. So Adam came. So all different creatures, you know, from skies and the earth, they all wanted to come and pay respect to Adam, who is the Khalifa of Allah, who is the ambassador of Allah who is the representative for Allah. So in far, far place, there were some beautiful deers. You know deers, right? Uh, spotted deers, right? So there were deers. They heard that Allah has sent his farishte, right? Uh, uh, and Allah has sent farishte, uh, Allah has sent Adam on this earth. So the deer came, deers on this, uh, came to know that Adam is here. Allah is They all decided, I heard of, you know, about two, three hundred, four hundred, five of them. Let's go and see what Allah's ambassador, Allah's Khalifa looks like. And let us play, pray our, pay our respect to Adam. Right. So these deer moved from whichever forest area there. They traveled and they traveled and they traveled and they traveled. And they came to Adam. And they bowed their head and they said, Oh, Allah's Khalifa, Allah's representative, we are dear, also a creation of Allah, creature, makhluk, and we live in forest far away. We have came to pay our respect to Allah and through, through you to pay, communicate our respect to Allah. Oh, Allah's Prophet, will you 
Allah's Khalifa ambassador, will you please tell Allah how happy we are to see his repentance? We have come for your ziyarat. Ziyarat, you know, we mama and dad and all, they all go for ziyarat. Ziyarat means to go and see, meet someone, visit someone. So we have come for your ziyarat. Oh, Hazrat Adam. Hazrat Adam took his hand and put his hand over the heads of all the DAs who had come to see him. Okay? Those DAs were going back to the forest where they came from. And when they were coming very close to the forest, the other deer who had not gone with them, who were still in the forest, they were smelling some beautiful fragrance. Beautiful fragrance that they never smelled before. Right? And as the deers came to the, to the area, they said, where have you come from? Where have you got from your body? We have... Uh, Mushk, we have fragrance, beautiful fragrance from your body. He said, No, we only went to Adam, alayhi salam, and he put his, he was so happy with us, he put his hand over our head because we paid our respect to Allah and respect to his, his prophet, right? And he put, the moment he put his hand over our head, from that time, I don't know, we have got this mush. And you know, uh, brother, my little children, it is called Mushke Ambar, right? So others, dear, said, okay, we will also go to pay our respect to Adam. And they traveled and they came to Adam. They said, oh, Adam, my Allah's prophet, we have come to see you and have a zarat of you. Then Adam put his hand over their head and they were happy. They came back. But they did not have the fragrance, the sweet smell of what is called in Arabic, mushke ambar, right? They asked, but why is it that we, you went and you got, you got the beautiful smell of mushke ambar, we didn't get. Then the, the senior, the old amongst the other, those who have had the good smell said, the reason is, because our niyat, you know, we were talking about vazu and niyat. They said our niyat was, our intention was to seek the audience, to seek the zarat of Hazrat Adam, right? Our intention, niyat, was not to go so that we could get that sweet smell. It is the niyat that counts. It is the answer to the question of vazu, and it is the answer to the question of uh, thank you, Talib Uncle. So uh, that was the last question. Uh, you already asked, uh, you already answered Hashim Fiza's question. So uh, thank you for joining everyone. And um, a special thanks to Talib Uncle for his time and sharing his knowledge with us. Uh, inshallah, we will meet you in the same day, same time next week. Uh, may Allah and Mola accept our effort and the dua for everyone. May Allah give you all health and happiness. And a special thank to Shiane Ali Lecture Group. That's always her dua effort before we leave. I, Faiza, can I say one thing? Yeah. Right? There are so many meetings I go to, and there, there are people like you, uh, you know, who take control and conduct them. You have done super well. Now okay. I shall buy you a Mars bar, twenty-five percent extra free, right? And but more thanks also to all the other children. Choti choti bache bachiya hain, chote bade sab. They have been so good to sit down and listen to an old man like me, right? But more important, uh, Faiza, tell everybody that the time they have they spent in this program, right? It has been noted down by angels, by Farishte, right? And it will be written down. Like in the at the end of the year, you get your uh, school card, isn't it? Right? Your school report, right? We all have to have a school report when we are on this earth. And the whoever participates in this majlis, in this zikr, in this program, programs like this, where the 
uh, Allah's great uh, recitations takes place and the fazail, the praise, praises of Muhammad Ali Muhammad, it is written in their uh, report card at the end of the year in the time of uh, Jannah before the gate, it will be of great importance. Uh, thank you. So now I will recite Dua Farij. Let's all recite. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma kulla valiyaka al hujjat ibn al Hasan. Salavatuka alayhi wa ala bahi. Fi azhi sadu wa fi kulli sad. Waliyan bahafiza wa qaida wa nasira. Padalila mu'ayna hatta tuskinahu wa zikatahu wa tamatiyahu fi hata vila. Bi rahmatika ya raham ar-rahameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Keep smiling everyone. Khudafis. Khudafis.